Email todayradio at rte.ie. Well, like all airlines at the moment, Ryanair is facing a very challenging future with job cuts, refund controversies, heavy financial losses and a wide range of new safety measures likely to be implemented. Now, the airline said yesterday that it expected to post a loss of more than 200 million euro for the quarter to June. But it also told investors that it has sufficient funds to weather the COVID-19 storm. Well, joining us on the line now is Ryanair CEO Eddie Wilson. Eddie, good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Morning. Um, I know that Ryanair has warned that there will be significant price discounting and below cost selling from other airlines that have received, as, as you call them, huge state aid war chests. Does that mean, do you think, that the price of flying generally is going to come down? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think certainly in the short term, um, what's going to happen is that once we get people back flying for uh, what's left of the summer season, which is why we were out in the second week in May, to get back to some level of normality for July and August. But I think once we get into the winter, um, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, price uh, discounting. And there may well be uh, some price discounting in August. But I think the important thing is to get people back safely uh, flying and adapting to the new reality in this uh, uh, post-lockdown world. Um, And just in terms of the viability of Ryanair itself then, with a loss of more than 200 million for the quarter to the end of June, how long can the company survive with those kind of losses if if they're ongoing? I mean, what you've got to do, in, particularly in this industry, there's always a crisis coming. And because we're not a state airline and there's nobody to bail us out, um, we've always been preparing for whatever is thrown at us. And um, we've got a very strong balance sheet, and that's what gets you through. And what you've got to do in, in, in coming uh, when you're taking these crises on is to adjust your cost base. And we are doing that because the reason you've got to adjust your cost is that fares are going to be lower and the only way to stay in business for the long term is to be adaptable and flexible and preserve as many jobs as possible. And, um, and that's what we've always... We didn't think we were ever going to have a crisis where, every, where flying was essentially stopped for three to four months. Um, and it is, it's, it's just in the DNA in this company um, from the very start. We look back 30 years where everyone was trying to put us out of business at the start. Mm. Um, we learned from that and we um, take a very prudent approach so that we can stay in business for the long term. Yeah, and you're talking about adjusting your cost base. And one of those things is obviously people losing their jobs because there mm. were some 3,000 job cuts that Ryanair announced in recent weeks. And then just last Friday, the company said it was cutting more than 250 jobs across its, its office network. Mm. Um, are all of those numbers based on pilots and crew accepting a 20% pay cut? Is that non-negotiable in your view? Yeah, I mean, what you've got to do is that you've got to adjust your variable cost. Um, that means that, and, and, I, and I think a lot of people will be sensible about this. If, you know, the, the aviation industry is in meltdown, who's going to be here for the longest? Who's going to preserve the maximum amount of jobs? And what we've said to the unions is, in the 20 different countries that we're talking to them, is that, look, there will be, there will be uh, pay cuts here, but they will be restored. Um, and we've been upfront about that. As the business uh, recovers, there will be inevitably job losses because if we're going to fly 50% less than we did last year or than than we had hoped to do this year, that has to have an effect on the number of people that you have. Will you and Michael O'Leary be taking pay cuts? Sorry, sorry, it's it's important to just finish off that we will return to growth and those jobs will come back at at some stage and pay will be restored. Okay, but in terms of pay, I'm just wondering, will yourself and Michael O'Leary be taking pay cuts? Absolutely. Taking, I'm on a 50% pay cut at the moment. And um, Michael? Michael is on that as well. Yeah. All right. So for the, for the uh, foreseeable future until this, until this resolves itself. Yeah. Well, Michael has made a commitment up until, until next March. And that what we're doing is we are going through job cuts and pay cuts here in our Dublin office as well. So okay. you'll hear In terms of that. then people booking flights, is that happening? Are you taking bookings for flights at the moment? Yeah, I mean, like throughout this, um, like we'd cancelled about 99.5% of our flights and we were running a skeleton service for repatriation flights um, over the last uh, number of months. But now this step up is going to have, people are now booking, countries are opening up. Italy made an announcement they're open from the 3rd of June. Spain has said that they're opening up um, uh, for the summer. Greece is opening up from July and Portugal is already open. And I mean, this is on the back of 
people having to make sensible adjustments. We all, the vast majority of us live in urban areas. We're going to have to make these adjustments on how we move around cities, how we move on public transport and how we move through airports and on airplanes. Yeah, I know actually that Ryanair does have a flight available from Dublin to Milan on the 22nd of June. Um, that's just 48 euro for that flight. Uh, but that is an area that the government, the Irish government, is advising people not to go if it's not essential, the non-essential travel to that area. And it's obviously, it was one of the hot spots in terms of the outbreak of this virus in Europe. So is it is it responsible to be flying people there? I, like, I mean, you look at, like, there's a, a pretty iconic picture in most of the press this morning with uh, two uh, young ladies sitting in the Duomo uh, Piazza in the centre of Milan, uh, you know, as a as, as uh, life is beginning to return to normal, albeit with social distancing. And I think what we're going to have to, if we're going to get back to some level of normality, everyone's going to have to do this responsibly. And it isn't just Ryanair. It's the people who travel with you. It's people who have symptoms to stay at home. And, you know, if we're going to have temperature checks at airports and people wearing face masks, you know, that's what's going to have to happen because it's not just about... Um, uh, airplanes or airports it's about shopping centres it's about mass transport and we're going to have to get back to some level of normality and masks and temperature checks and people staying home who are displaying symptoms seems to be the sensible thing to do. Yeah, I want to ask you about face masks, actually, because I know that Michael O'Leary made a claim yesterday on BBC Radio about this. He was saying that, and I quote, face masks are effective at eliminating about 98.5% of the risk of COVID-19. Mm. He actually said that twice yesterday. Yeah. Um, now, UCD professor Ronan Cahill has told the Business Post today that no recognised health authority stood over that 98.5% figure at mm. this uh, at this point. Why does Michael O'Leary think he knows better? Well, I mean, it's not that Michael uh, knows better. I mean, what you have here is that, I mean, if you look at even on RTE last week, you had uh, Professor Luke O'Neill from uh, Trinity College saying that wearing masks reduced by 95% the risk of the spread of the virus. Like, I don't want to get into, like, what people say their particular view is on this. There is no doubt, if you look at the World Health Organization, there is no panacea here, but there is no doubt that masks along with um, uh, hand washing and good hygiene um, it, it are the way to go with this. Um, uh, come and on, I'm not talking about is, different people's views. This is Michael O'Leary, the group is CEO. Yeah, he was and quoting, uh, yeah, he was quoting from, uh, there was a um, a tweet out from the um, the Matter and it had, uh, the Matter Hospital and it had, um, there was some comment on that that it said, and he was repeating that, that it said that where two people are wearing masks, that is, um, the basis of that is that it would have a, it would eliminate it by 98.5%. And I've just given you a quote Eliminate what? The risk of spread? Not the, the risk of spread. But like, there, like, masks are only one part of it, right? There's good hand washing. There are uh, social distancing where you can do that. But the reality is we live in urban areas. We're all making slowly uh, post-lockdown. And you can see that people are making sensible adjustments to that. And all we're saying is that when you fly on board, our crew and our passengers will have masks that will reduce the risk substantially, along with, um, with uh, hand washing protocol, uh, etc., so that we can get back to some level of uh, normality. Because I, I do wonder about Michael O'Leary's approach to this between that comment, which is not correct, that the face masks are effective at eliminating 98.5% of, of the risk of COVID-19. That's, that's just not right. Um, according to health experts, that's not right. Um, and well, he, was also... quoting from, he was quoting from a tweet. He didn't make the number up. He was quoting from a tweet that came from the Matter Hospital. All right, well, a, perhaps you know, he could have dead checked dead with the World Health Organization, which says masks alone are not sufficient to provide an adequate level of protection. Yeah, they, what they say is that the use of a mask alone is not sufficient, but it can, along with, uh, with other with physical distancing and hand and and uh, hand hygiene as well. So there's a, there's sure. a suite of different initiatives I suppose initiatives I'm wondering, here. Eddie, is about no, his approach to saying, this. Because sorry, he, sorry, sir? Because I'm, I'm wondering about his approach to this because he's made that comment about the masks and he's also made this uh, pretty controversial comment about uh, Britain's plan for arriving passengers to self-isolate in their accommodation for 14 days. He said that's idiotic, effectively unenforceable. Um, he said that there's no medical and scientific basis for it. Yes, there is, though. There is a medical and scientific basis for it. There, there is, like, like, sorry, with quarantines, right? Quarantines don't work. They're unpoliceable, 
unimplementable. And now you have the UK government that are that are uh, resiling from that, talking about air bridges this morning. There is no way that you can do that. It sounds like a good idea, but when people arrive in airports, they end up going on public transport. And what do you do? Do you take everybody who's on the Gatwick Express or the Stansted Express and isolate them as well? It doesn't work. It sounds good. What you've got to do is you've got to have sensible protocols in, in place. You've got to use masks um, on board. They have, um, they have demonstrated in China in returning to 70% of flying there that doing temperature checks at airports having masks on board, having masks on public transport and in shopping areas is the right way to go. Well, I just wonder, because like, Britain's respect, medical experts do they think they work and our medical no, experts think they work. Sorry. And I just wonder what no, makes Michael O'Leary and indeed yourself Mike, think that you Michael, know better than the medical Michael and scientific, is quoting scientific directly, experts. With respect to her, Michael is quoting directly from the, a Matter Hospital tweet. No, I'm talking about the quarantine now. Yeah, oh, sorry, on quarantine, but quarantines are, like don't work. That's why countries around Europe are lifting them at the moment. But the, they the had Italians, them in place, Eddie. The, the they the had Italians, them in place. The, no, the Ital- yes, because uh, because we're in a sort of a post lockdown where people, uh, where governments have made sensible decisions. In Italy, they have now um, lifted them from June third. They did that yesterday. The Spanish are doing it. The Greeks are doing it. The Portuguese have done it. The British this morning are talking about their rolling back. First, it was the Irish were OK to go into Britain. No basis in science. Now the French were OK. Now the French aren't OK. Now what they're doing is we're going to have air bridges out of the UK. I think the quarantine, like when you're talking about the movement of millions of people, trying to say that you're going to be able to police people and know that they're going to be locked down at a particular address is un- unimplementable. And, you know, the police would not be able to follow up on this. Right. What you have to do is to get the cooperation of people, which Irish people have shown over the last number of months that they, they, will, they will adhere to and be compliant with reasonable ways of moving around. And I think that's going to be the same when we're in this post Okay, I, I better move on because there's, there's lots of people texting in and we won't have time to get to all the texts but in relation to refunds um, yeah. a lot of people asking questions around refunds and one person saying why will, are the refund vouchers only valid for 12 months is that even legal and also when will we get our refund? Yeah, I mean, like what we've done is that like everyone who wants a refund will get a refund. And I've said this on many radio stations. It's a volume related issue. We've somewhere in the order of 25 to 30 million of these to get through because of the uh, because uh, flights throughout uh, April, May and June have been uh, brought to a halt. We will get there. The vouchers were put out there in a way that gave people an option when flights are being restored, people will be able to exchange those now to fly this summer. If they don't use the vouchers within 12 months, they will get their money back. The issue with, with voucher or the issue with refunds is about volume and how we process them. Processing 25 million to 30 million uh, refunds takes time and not something that you can do remotely. And I just ask people to be patient. And I know it's going to take a number of months for us to get through this, but we will get through it. Okay. People will you get mentioned masks on the planes then and people wearing yeah. masks on planes. And I know Aer Lingus are also advising that yeah. uh, suitable face coverings. Will people have to wear their masks all the time? Can they take them off to have a drink? Yeah, I mean, they will be able to. Uh, they'll be able to lower their mask to do that. Um, we'll have a limited service on board. We'll have a limited contact on board between crew. We will have the seatbelt signs on, so we won't have any queuing uh, for toilets. We'll, you know, people will be able to request uh, uh, to move about the cabin in a much limited uh, fashion. I think people will welcome that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Lots more questions and maybe you'll join us again uh, to answer some of those questions. Ryan, our CEO. Okay, thank you very much, Eddie Wilson. Uh, Just approaching 12 o'clock, looking at the news headlines then, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr Tony Houlihan, has told the Dáil Special Committee on COVID-19 that there is no certainty that Ireland can keep the virus suppressed. The European Union has backed the World Health Organisation and its efforts to fight the coronavirus following a threat by US President Donald Trump to end his country's membership of the agency and a post-mortem is being carried out today on the body of a man found dead at a house on Bluebell Avenue in Dublin yesterday. Now that's all we have time for today. My thanks for listening. Today's programme was produced by Deirdre Neeline, researcher Neve Lines, broadcast coordinator Geraldine Collins on Sound Gardoffy.